We're all set. Mm -hmm. yep, okay, nice the here. time being 4.30, I'd like to call this meeting of the Economic Development Committee to order. May have a motion to adopt the agenda. Mm -hmm. Tom so moves, is there a second? Second. Okay. Fred seconds. Uh, uh, any changes? No corrections. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion approved. Next, approve the November 17th minutes. Motion to approve. No move. David makes the motion to approve. Is there second. a second? second? John seconds. Any changes to the minutes? Or... <clears throat> All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Aye. All right. Uh, we're up to review and possibly act on developer proposals. Chad, you want to lead us on that? Sure, I'll kick it off. Um, so as you guys know, over the past couple months, we've been talking about working with uh, two different developers, and we have both uh, developing uh, organizations with us tonight. Uh, first off, Randy Retzloff. I don't know, Randy, if you have the official title for your company, but I just know you as Randy Retzloff. And that's fine. I have different companies. So okay, good. wonderful. And then we also have SC Swiderski, and we have representation on uh, Zoom for that. So tonight's uh, goal was just to allow both developing firms to give presentations on some conceptual designs for the downtown riverfront site that we've been trying to talk about developing for quite some time now and uh, see if we can get some interest going on that. So if there's no questions, I'm going to give uh, the table to Randy to start off with and go from there. So um, Randy, you tell me what pictures you want me to, to start with and um, we'll go from there. All right, first I'll give a brief, uh, my wife Ingrid's in the back there, uh, give you a few things on what I've done in uh, 1997. I built the Sears store out there by Walmart. I brought that into town and uh, that was when retail was doing good. Mm -hmm. uh, needless to say, that's gone and out of here, but uh, uh, that was there. I still own the property between there and, and Walmart, which uh, like I said, developing and retail will be a while before that happens again. Uh, in 2000, uh, I gotta keep the year straight here, so bear with me. Uh, 2000, let me see the year here, 2002, 2001, 2002, I did a Coldwood development uh, behind uh, a quick trip north. Uh, that was seven, eight unit buildings, all brick construction, uh, condo style units, ceramic tile throughout, in-floor heating, a lot of extras. Uh, so I still own that today. And then in, uh, 2010, I bought the, the lodge up in Lakewood. It's called the Binder Lake Lodge, so I still have that. And in 2005, I, I went into the hotel business and I had the Magnuson Grand Hotel down in Madison, and I still have that today. Uh, so that's kind of a background on, on what I've done through the years. Uh, it took me a while to get going on that property there because I just didn't feel at the time when I talked to Chad the first time that it was the right place for apartment complexes because it was uh, the last frontage that we really have in the city for water, you know? And uh, so anyways, I did some researching and stuff and I, I got a couple of the realtors in town here. Uh, one Katie Frederick, to, she said it was okay to use her name. And we sat down and we went over some different ideas with condos and stuff. And we came to the conclusion after going around different <coughs> cities and stuff and checking out other condo areas that it just wasn't the place for it because you're going to be putting multi-unit behind it, which we thought would decrease the sales in it. Plus the view to the north was not what you would call exceptional. So we came to the conclusion, you know, me and a couple of the other realtors that they we just decided that we would stick with multi-unit. So I put together a site plan and uh, what we did was, uh, it would be A01. Mm -hmm. They drew up, I had the architect draw up two different, I did a sketch of it and then I had him basically put it on legal form and uh, we came up with eight, eight unit buildings, as you can see, uh, I don't think I got the right one. Hold on a second. A01. Mm -hmm. This one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one. That's the correct one. Okay. Yep. So you can see there's there's six, eight units running north and south. And then there's two running 
east and west along the water. And then to the way left, we have what would be a, a holding water retention pond. And, and that's probably going to, regardless who develops this land, is probably going to have to put that pond in there uh, just because that there is a 10 foot drop off in, in elevation from the southeast corner to the northwest corner. And, and not only that, on that particular corner there, there's also uh, two feet of uh, what we, you would call a base for building on, but then below that is another two and a half feet of wood fillings, which if uh, you go back and you check the boring samples that they did uh, through, uh, who was the engineering on that, Omni? And so that's probably going to have to be all dug out and anyways. So that'd be the perfect place to put a pond if you're gonna put a pond. And there may be other locations in that parcel too that you may run into the same thing where you may have to dig out four feet just to put in some good solid fill to build on. So, so anyways, that was eight, Eight, eight units that we had set up there. If you go to uh, A01, Chad, that one would be seven units and it would be just five units running north and south and two running east and west. I like that one better, the fact that it gives us more green space, which is, you know, this is, like I said, this is one of the last few areas to build on, which if you look at down the road, you know, at some point maybe, uh, Hoker Trucking may decide to retire and sell the plant and and the, the city may at that point may look at demolishing it, but it would be a nice start to that development. You got to start somewhere because right now it's not very attractive looking, you know. So anyways, this one here would give you more green space. And uh, as you can see, there would be uh, a road coming in off of... Uh, uh, what is that, Wyman? Mm -hmm. Coming off of Wyman, there would be a road running east and west on the parcel, and then we'd have three, basically three laterals, lateral roads running between, because these these apartment here, the garages would be on one side, and I'll show you that with the next film, but if you look to the far right, there's a blacktop road there, too. That is the city alley, so that the city would be responsible for, you know, and I would think they'd probably want to maintain that, but that's something that can be worked out at a later point, you know. Chad, if you go to uh, the next, the picture of the A unit. Yeah, the front, you had it right there. No, no. Tell me when to stop. Keep going. Right there. Now, if you look, this is the style of units that we would put in. And you look at the garages, there's eight garages feeding the eight units. And it would be a mixture. We're trying to get a mixture of uh, one unit, three unit, and two units in there. Currently, this here plan supports a 1,400 square foot per unit based on a two bedroom. We're going to bring that down probably in the area of uh, the 1,100 to 1,250 square feet. And the reason for that is, of course, the cost. And we want to be able to keep the rents in the 900 to 1,100 range because you get them too high and there's too many people that can't afford them, you know? But uh, it's, as you can see, there's a lot of different roof lines. It's a real attractive looking building. It's not a basic building by no means at all. And if you put to the, the backside, Chad, of that building. This one? That's the backside of that building. That's the side that would be facing the river. So as you can see, it's an attra attractive looking, looking building facing the river so people boating down the river ain't going to say oh man that is cheap looking that's ugly you know it's, it's a very nice looking building we're also going to try to implement into it uh what's called the east style look which is really popular right now and it's it's the in thing uh you're putting in windows that are black black windows you're, you're going with the gray light gray earth tones for the siding and then the stone around it, I'd be going basically three and a half to four feet up with stone, which would be a colored texture stone to go with them earth tones. So 
So that's what I'm looking at doing. It, I think it's a very beautiful, it's gonna be a very beautiful setting and it's gonna be a good place to start for 20, 30 years down the road, Hil Hilker pulls out of there and the city gets that land and now you can add to that. And now you got a place where you could put condos because you got some nice settings beside it, you know? So, so that's what I'm proposing. Uh, any questions on? What did you say, Randy? How many units total? There, well, I would go, I myself right now, I would go with the seven, eight units, which would be 56 units. The other floor, the other plan, site plan was for, uh, it would be 64. Okay. <clears throat> Right. But yeah. you don't get as much green space and yeah. you want it's downtown where everybody's going to see it. You want yeah. to keep as much green space and keep it as beautiful as you can. Yeah, good point. When you when you build this, would you start with one or a couple or is it a whole project of all 56 at one or how does this work? No, what I would do is just like I did when I did my project north of town here, the 56 units, I would put it. I put in two concrete slabs at a time and we'd get building two at a time. And the minute, you know, we were just about, we had them rented, we started pouring two, three more concretes. And that's what I would do here, basically. I would run it out and, and, and I, I don't think we'd have no problem filling them at all. I tend to agree. I do think so. I think you'll fill them all up. Where do you start on the east by where Smith Street comes down? Is that where you'd be starting with the apartments? I would probably start on the Wyman Street. Okay. The one running north and south there, north and south on the left there. I'd probably start from there, go across, and I would do the last two river ones last. Yeah. Because then we're gonna also have to put that pond area in there. And I got some ideals for a, a nice like waterfalls right there besides to spruce it up, make it you know really nice. But it'd be a nice, you know addition to the city. I think it would be something that would look really nice downtown. And then, like you said, you go, you go to the west there, uh, Hilker Trucking at some point, and they're doing fine. They, they may not sell for 50 years. I, I We have no way of knowing that. But at some point, if they decide to get out of the business, you know, at that point, then the city could look at acquiring that piece of parcel and, and moving on with that. So that's my thoughts. So your apartments are all two story, uh, two floors? Two floor, yes. Two floors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the three bedrooms, most of them, usually you try to keep the three bedrooms on the first floor. It's not always possible. Here we were building actually over onto the garages to get that extra bedroom. You can see in the front there. Mm -hmm. And the, the road would be a private road, the private road, uh, 20 feet wide. That's what I did mine out there. And now if you're going to a city road, which you turn it over to the city and they'd maintain it, you're gonna, see the road's gonna have to be 32 feet wide. So that, again, that cuts into that green space, you know, and it more, the more, more blacktop, the less attractive it is, you know, that's my thoughts, you know, so. I would go with the private road, maintain it just like I do out there and and less responsibility for the city to have to worry about. What would be the time frame on something like that that you would be looking at? If I could get uh, the engineering and everything done to where we didn't have no floodplain issues, I'd start right away next spring. And I figured it would take probably a year and a half to possibly two years to finish it up. But it could be done in a year and a half if everything went well with, you know, with the flooding, as far as getting everything out of the, the zone, the flood zone. When I, when I built them, it's easier to get them out before you put a building on. When I did them out there, I went ahead and did it. And it took me two years after I built them to get it out of the flood, you know, the floodway. So it takes time and it gets expensive too, because you're playing that flood insurance, which can run a couple thousand dollars a month, you know, so you don't want that. So I would try to get that all done and out of the, 
the way right away before I even started digging for footings. Would you have to haul in a lot of filth for that? But this here, we're going to probably have to fill in two feet just to get it out of that, yeah. that floodway. Yeah. And then at that point, you can take it back out if you have to, but you got to put it there initially. What type of renters are you hoping to attract? Are you going to have any expectations or restrictions? You know, when, when you build something, it's, it's nice to say I'm going to get all professionals, you know, but realistically, that just isn't the way it always goes, you know? Sure. Uh, there's, sometimes there's people that come in and they get housing and they may have two children. It might be a single mother, but they get help. Uh, I have a nice mix out there and, and it works out great. And to say I'm going to target just professionals, I'd be lying to you. You know, I ain't going to do that. You What's know, the grant? Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You know, granted, you know, you, you try not to, you try to keep the troublemaker type people out of there if you can, you know, every good development, you know, you don't want to feel bad people ruin that. So, uh, you, you know, you do your best to keep them out. But as far as targeting, say, just high class people, no, I ain't going to say that, you know, because that ain't the way it is. And if anybody have, tells you that, that is. Not but you're not going to have any sort of restrictions, income restriction or. Well, income, that, again, that's based on if they're getting some assistance, you know, you know. That's some of these people, they get assistance. And and I've, I've had some out there that have been on housing for four or five years, and they're great. They keep their house plate, placed immaculate clean. They pay on time. They pay their portion, and they're great tenants, you know. But. What assistance uh, would you be looking for? Are, are you uh, from the city, and then also are you – Trying for any grants, federal or state, to support this? I just, I did apply just to see what was out there. I mean, you'd be a fool if you didn't, you know. But um, she just called me today, and she was emailing me the information that they had. So right now, at this point, I can't tell you. So uh, when I did my project out there, I didn't do no assistance. You know, it's easier. You can get things done right yep. away, you yep. know. That's cool. um, the only way I would take assistance if, if it didn't slow me down to where what I was doing and it was feasible for doing it. But I'm not going to take it just to get some extra money and then sit there and prolong the project by another year and a half, you know. Because you got your money invested, that's costing you money too, you know. All right, other questions? Good. Cool. All right. Very exciting. I got one more question. Yeah. On, a, on a project like this, what it seems big to those of us who aren't, uh, to me, who's not involved in it, how much capacity would the community have to contribute to a project like this as far as plumbers, electricians, local contractors, local? That's a good point. You know, when I built them out there, everybody was from New London, Hartonville. Okay. Uh, them contractors, I did contact uh, some of them. It's been a while since I worked with them. There's probably half of them that are still in business, and they said, definitely, we're, we want to work for you. you know? uh, so all my contractors would be right from the area. And my, my banking would be right from the city. Everything would be right from the locals. There's some, there's an exception occasionally, like uh, your insulators, there aren't no insulators in London or Hartonville as far as, so that you usually got to go to Appleton for, your gyp, lightweight concrete, you know, that you got to go to Appleton or Green Bay, but them are just a, a couple, you know, the rest are all would be local. Any other questions? Well, thank you very much. Yep. Okay. Really, You're really welcome. appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Yeah, thank you, Randy. Thanks much. Very exciting. I will uh, go ahead and then introduce our next group um, from SC Swiderski. Um, Jackie, I'm assuming you're going to kick it off by chance? Well, thank you. And do you want me to bring up the, the things on my end, or do you want to try doing it from your end? I think I should be able to share. So 
Um, thanks again for the opportunity to talk. And I also want to congratulate you. It is um, nice for a city to have an option between two developers that are both interested in a project in your area. So congratulations on that. Um, that looks like a very nice proposal and some nice buildings. Um, first, a lot of people are visual, so I'm gonna pull up and share my screen um, of a fly through of the site. Um, so it gives you a good idea. All right, so that should be coming up. Do you see it right now before I start it? Yes, thank you. All right, there you go. Um, Madeline, who's on the, the meeting today, um, did this for us and it just gives you a good um, viewpoint of the buildings in 3D so you can see how they're laid out as well as the green space. Uh, much like what Randy was saying, we appreciate that this is a very unique site on your river and we want to make sure that it looks really nice so you can kind of see what it looks like from all angles here. Now I will go into the presentation. So now if my other screen comes up, there we go. So we um, have been completing our research. I think you um, had Madeline and Pat on last time trying to tell you about how we're looking to do a nice unit mix at this location. Um, and so I'm Jackie again, the business development manager, and this is our leadership team here at SC Swiderski. We have Tom in charge of our construction, Carrie's property management, and Nathaniel is our operations manager. And then Pat, you heard from last time, he does our research for our leasing department. Um, Courtney is our administrator. And then Madeline and Cal are on the meeting here today as well. So um, Madeline does our drafting, our site planning and these images. Um, and she's also on the design team. So she has a lot of input into these building designs. And Cal is our project engineer. So he will coordinate all the engineering services on the site so we can figure out things like the stormwater and the utilities um, if we move forward with you on the project. Uh, we did complete our feasibility for the site, and I just wanted to share the news that the site did rate on um, this location is very good in our scoring model. And some of the top factors were the location. So obviously it's on the river close to your downtown. It's on a main street where it has high visibility. All of those things play into the scoring. Another top factor were the business and industry. So you have some strong employers in town, and that's something we look for, as well as um, cooperation with the municipality. So those were the top factors in our rating system. Um, for the conceptual site plan, I'll have Madeline share um, how she laid out the site. And again, it's just conceptual at this point. We'd still work with you to make adjustments as we move forward. Yes, so for this conceptual site plan, we have three different building si styles. There's 44 units in total with a combination of both two and three bedroom units. And there's open recreation space. We were thinking of an additional, like a community garden would be great for this area. And like Jackie said, this is just a conceptual site plan and we would be more than willing to work with the city and utilities to create a more finalized plan that will best suit this site. Um, so there is a lot of ample green space on the site as you can see through that rendering. And we um, align the buildings so we prioritize the river views for all tenants. Um, by placing the larger buildings by the street and the one stories more by the river. Um, we chose to orientate the building, the buildings facing east and west so that they prioritize the sunlight for the sunrises and sunsets. And then that makes the riverfront trail more public friendly, not having tenants' backyards backing up the walking trail. So there are three different buildings on this site. Here's another example of what the site looks like from a different angle. And then, like I said, that there's views from all buildings. So for an example, even though the buildings are facing east to west, you can still see them from your backyard. This is a view from the Bedford building, which is our one story building. And then from our furthermost unit on the Huntington, you still have views to the riverfront. And then kind of for a summary of the project, so we have a five acre site here and um, much like Randy was mentioning, we're very conscious of making sure it has adequate green space. We're only doing 8.8 .8 units per acre, which is very low density for a multifamily site. Um, 
We have adequate parking on the site. So all of the units will have attached garages and then they'll have additional spaces in front of their garages. So we have a total of actually 149 parking spaces on the site for an average of 3.4 parking spots per unit. Um, as far as the buildings, we chose three different styles. So even though it's a small site, we want to give a lot of variety and we want to make sure that we have a large target market so we can appeal to lots of different people on the site to keep the community very vibrant. So the small community will be very vibrant, much like the mm -hmm. overall community of New London. So one building is the Hampton, which is on um, the street side and that's our four unit building. Um, Bedford, we're having two of those on the site. That's a six unit building that's one level. And then our Huntington building is an eight unit building and we have two of those on the site. So it's a variety of one, um, one level living. Um, the Hampton unit actually is multiple stories. So you live like a townhome style, main level living in the bedrooms upstairs. So it's really a wide variety of people that we can attract as far as young professionals, um, families because we have three bedrooms on the site and also empty nesters with the one level living. Uh, we did skew this site to be slightly higher end than some of our other locations because we're taking advantage of this river site um, and we know we can attract those um, rent rates at this location. So overall there's 32 two bedroom units and we have 12 three bedroom units um, for a total of 44 apartment homes. There's um, a wide range of square footage. So we have units that are 889 square feet, which is pretty average for a two bedroom, all the way up to 1420. And there'll be eight different floor plans. So again, within 44 units, we have eight floor plans that we're offering, and that should provide a wide variety of um, renters um, that would be attracted to the site. Um, in addition, there'll be a monument sign on the property. Um, we always enclose our trash dumpsters with a full enclosure so you won't see the dumpsters. Um, and a mail shed so people can get their mail inside of an enclosed location. Um, rent rates on the site, we are starting at $1,000 up to $1,600. And again, the rent rates at $1,000, that does include your heat and water, cable and Wi-Fi, as well as the services, snow and lawn care. Um, the project value for this site is a $4 million project that we'd be bringing to your community. And everything is designed here in house. Um, we would be the general contractor on the site. And much like Randy mentioned, we do hire local subcontractors. So this would go out to bid. So everyone in the local community could bid on the project. Um, we also send it out to local lenders as well. We know that they know the community well and they like to invest in their community. So we open it up to the local lenders first. Um, as far as financing, we aren't using any kind of um, government funding. Um, it's our owner equity contribution into the project, and then we do conventional financing on it. And then I'll have Madeline go through the three buildings we selected and tell you a little bit more about them. So this first building here, this is our Hampton building, and this is our newly designed building for this project. Um, we chose a multicolored exterior to match the vibrant and colorful downtown area. And this is a four unit building with a mix of two and three bedrooms. It's a modern townhouse style with private spacious balconies for each unit. So then this is what the front looks like. And then the Bedford building is a one story building that's gonna be six units. And just like the Hampton building, there is two and three bedroom units in this building. And then this building as well has private entrances as well as private backyard patio spaces for each unit. And then our last building here is our Huntington building. It's eight units and it's all two bedrooms. This building is very nice though because it is a very versatile building because although it's all two bedroom units, there's four different floor plan variations in it. So it gives a wide variety in different markets for rent rates. And then there's what the back and the side of this building looks like. As far as project timeline, um, if we were selected that we would complete our project planning, we have a lot of engineering to do on this site to figure out how much fill needs to be brought in as well as the drainage um, on the site. And um, with our new building, we do have to get that engineered um, and go through the approval process. We would go out to bid and for our state approvals um, in spring 2022. So it'll be about one year to get through the planning process um, with the city. Um, then we would start the project in the summer and buildings would be started in the fall 2022 and it's a one year project for us. So we do stagger the building opening so different style units are opening at different times, but it is um, a pretty quick once they start opening a building opens, you know, very quickly succession after that. 
So we would have the project completed in fall 2023. And then I just included some more information about the company, but um, we had the benefit of talking to you a couple other times, but we've been in business for 28 years and this is our business model. So we design the sites, we build them and we maintain them long-term. Um, we took a lot of care on this site to make sure the street view is very attractive. Um, so we use those more urban style buildings with lots of colors from the street since that will get a lot of traffic. Um, so I think the fronts of those buildings will make a nice introduction to the site. And then from the riverside, as you saw in the fly through, um, you're gonna see the sides of the buildings, but everyone should be able to see the river from their patios. That was kind of the setup we wanted. On our tall buildings that are on the street side, they are three stories. So the upper level units, the bedroom windows will overlook the river and they can see over the buildings as well. So we really were making sure that we were taking advantage of this great location. So. Um, if you have any questions, um, we also have, as I said, our engineers on the call, as well as Madeline, who designed the site, um, but we're open to any questions. And then this chat has the full presentation if you needed more information about our background. But a lot of this, I think we've talked about previously with you on the site. Wonderful. Any questions for um, the SC Swiderski team? What about the uh, drainage uh, that Randy brought up? Would you also be potentially having to put a drainage pond in? I'll have Cal answer that, but I think we did plan to put a lot of fill in that location. Yeah, so <clears throat> kind of what we're looking at anyhow, since we got to raise the site, you know, like he had mentioned too, about that two to three foot range, um, majority of the site has got to be brought up. Um, further and like that'll kind of be determined further in, into engineering once we get going on the site. Any complications that do arise will be handled like upon uh, approval, obviously. And then once we get going and actually breaking ground, so um, once our calculations are figured out, we'll have a better idea um, how to mitigate all the water on the site and where we can go with it. So. But we did leave some open space so we can shift the buildings. Um, and as Madeline mentioned, we left that one side open. That's going to be more for a community garden, but that can be moved throughout the site. So with the amount of green space, we can definitely accommodate, you know, any ponds that would be required um, when they're finished with those calculations. Other questions? We minimize stuff. The thing on the is there one entrance to there so all traffic enters off of that no there's two i think you'll see there's one right in the middle as well so they can enter off the side or the middle of the site is the construction that's happening i think it may be completed already in wapaka or in hortonville are they similar to the site plans that you've picked out in new london if we wanted to drive over and take a look for ourselves um in wapaka you'll see the huntington building which is the two-story building so that is going up there so you can see that at that location um this one level building is um in Weston. So if you wanted to make a trip to Weston, we're first building it there. Um, and then this, as Madeline mentioned, that three-story building is a brand new one that we kind of designed for the site to kind of give it more of that urban feel on the front. So that one is not located there. Um, Hortonville it will start construction in the spring. So you can go there and check out kind of how we do our construction and stuff, but you won't be able to see probably any of the buildings until, um, you know, in the fall. Thank you. Same question as I had for Randy. Are you anticipating any grants from the state or federal or assistance from the city with this project? Um, we are not doing any kind of grant application. So this would just be conventional financing and then financed um, with equity from our owner contributing on the site. As far as city assistance, we would be looking to um, purchase the land at a, at a very low rate um, that would make the project feasible for us. And then we might need assistance um, in um, the part of the land that we don't own that goes all the way to the river. Um, it seems like we would need some kind of retaining wall there. And in addition to all the fill that we're bringing into the site, we might need to negotiate that retaining wall um, to be on the land that we don't 
wouldn't own on this property. And also with either scenario, with either developer, obviously there's utilities that we've talked about in the past that we would have to, you know, figure out how they fit in because there's that sanitary interceptor that runs through there and, you know, how that's going to be financed and things like that. So those are all conversations that with either developer, we're going to have to figure out as we move along. Uh, Chad, how does that work with uh, uh, installing the sewer, sanitary sewer into the water and the utilities? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that contractor responsibility or city? For whoever's going to relocate them and depending on where they go, I think that's got to be negotiated and figured out throughout the process. So, oh, okay. I mean, I don't think there's a set answer right now. Obviously, we would have hypothetically if the country if the developer would move them on, on their behalf with city financing hypothetically sure. we would have our specifications you know by far on the sewer side you know new London, i don't want to speak on behalf of newland utilities and how they would want to approach it as well but that would all have to be flushed out through the process okay. you know? no no pun intended okay. <laughs> other questions when are we hoping to make a decision and move forward? Well, like I said in my memo, I don't think there's a, you know, a set plan that we've done this before in a situation like this. So I think you have several different scenarios. Um, but I, I guess my um, thought process is looking at these, you know, conceptual designs. I think what you're doing is figuring out a developer to work with and create a relationship with. You know, um, these are all conceptual. They might be modified depending on what engineering gets going on. But what I think you guys need to do is kind of think about, look at the plans, look at, you know, what these developers have brought to the table. And what you're going to do is create a relationship that city staff are going to work together on figuring out where these utilities go, working together to, you know, to make these sites happen. It might look a little bit, it probably will look a little bit different when everything's said and done. But I think you guys got a hard, hard uh, decision right now because you guys got two really good developers that have brought up some really cool uh, options and, and uh, um, conceptual designs to the table. So whether you feel like you want to make a decision now or chew on it for a month and, and, and you know, think if there's any other questions that you can bring to me and I can bring to the developers, your call, you know, as the, as the uh, economic development committee. But uh, again, I think you guys got a tough decision with two really cool developers uh, kind of think about and chew on. So wherever you want to go with it. I agree with you, Chad. Uh, two very good developers. Um, and there may be additional questions that you think of. Um, I'd like to make a decision as soon as possible, but on the other hand, I want to make sure, because in this case, we do have the two developers and I want to make sure we're making the right decision before we move forward. So my thoughts would be that if you have questions in the next, couple of weeks or so, get a hold of Chad, refer him on to the developer, <coughs> so we get all the facts, questions answered, and be prepared at the January meeting then to uh, make a decision. That would be my suggestion. Do, do you think that this should be something that that other council members should should weigh in on? I, I know there's a several That's missing a tonight. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. a great point. Yeah. Can we force them to watch this meeting on YouTube? <laughs> And can we all come up with a couple questions to make sure that when we do compare this, because it is a difficult decision. These are two fantastic developers. Exactly. Randy has been wonderful in New London. But so that we're comparing apples to apples and oranges to oranges, you know, for example, total project value or, you know, without any inflated estimates and reality of when the project's going to be completed. Nobody likes to see one started and then, oh, well, the economy went bad. Um, there are certain guarantees that you kind of want to know known factors before you make such a heavy decision. And I certainly would like those other alder representatives, Lori, and everyone to really look at this because this is exciting it is. to be given the choice of two fantastic proposals. Um, but I think we, like Dave said, we need to not sit on this very long. We have time that we can talk to the other aldermen, have them watch the video and, and come together with 
do our next meeting. Yeah. Request them to be here, ask them to be here. You could have a joint meeting too. I mean, yeah. have it at a council meeting yeah. slash economic development committee because there's obviously people that are yeah. on the committee who aren't on council. That's all. Good. Does that make sense? I think you'd have more questions as well that other areas might know, know better to ask, whether it's utilities, whether it's you know piping that we don't know about. Yeah. I think it would be good to have utilities here. Uh, Hello. Mike's here. He's here. Mike there. He's here. So I'm looking, I, I made up a preliminary drawing when we had the original plan back a year and a half ago for for my water utilities because you had a you had a uh, you know set of plans and it's pretty similar to what you know what they're proposing now as well as far as water mains i mean it might be a little bit different but i know when we were talking about moving the sewer the water and the electric it was over a million dollars if i'm not mistaken when we talked about the last project and i assume that this is going to be in a similar amount of money for this as well i mean so i'm just going to let you know what we were talking about when we were researching this in the past for electric to get run in the sewer and water to be moved that's in the lot already and then new stuff installed that would be functional was although um no it's yeah i think that's still about it's fairly close so just just so people are aware of that Thank you, Mike. Okay. So that's the plan. Any uh, questions? I don't think we have to vote on anything tonight. So if you do have questions, uh, please get hold of Chad. Refer him to us or to Chad. And uh, again, be prepared next month to make a decision. Mm -hmm. Agenda. Yep. Light. Oh, yeah. Light. Oh, yeah. I agree. Before we start, yep. Yep. Yeah. Keep it light. That'll probably be one of the only topics. Oh, on the agenda. only thing on the agenda. Next month's agenda. Yeah. Once again, I just want to thank both developers. You guys have been great to work with so far. It, this is exciting. Mm -hmm. You know, just to kind of see what's going on. So maybe we should ask any last comments or questions. Exactly. Randy, you have any, does that make sense what we're supposed to hear? Yeah, one, one thing I would say I take a look at also is your plan looks very nice, but are you going to want that many exits coming off on Wolf River Avenue? And that was the one thing I didn't want to see because that's a lot of traffic on that road. And if you look at their, their plan there, they, they got a lot of exits on into the driveway. So take a look at that. That's definitely probably going to be an issue going forward. You know, in this case, I believe that is that a county road or is that a city road? Mm. City. It's not D, is it? It doesn't. Does D go through there? It's, it's a truck county road. up it's until a truck Wyman. Road. To Wyman Street. No, it it might be part. Road. I'd have to double check. Yeah, because it's. It gets to be a county road. I thought it was a city road, but I don't remember. They always had the truck route through there. Oh, it's County W. Yeah, but I'm talking um, Wood River Avenue. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Somebody do it. So. But, you know, they, if it's a county road, they, they're going to probably say you can't have that many exits off. I'll have to look. Something you might want to check. I'll have to look where D goes because I know D comes through. I think D might go through Pearl Street to downtown. I'll have to double check. Not, not W, I bet that's B. No, W goes down like Wyman and then takes left. Yeah. So on both the road, it's probably that's D. Uh, question is, does D, I, I'd have to double check. I don't think so. I think that's our road. If it is the city road, well, then you guys can decide if you want that many next drop. I just saw for safety the last, at least a month and a half, it got it off the yard with all the six. Yeah, right. And I have both presentations that I can probably try to get it to you guys so you guys can chew on the on the information. It's kind of hard just to see it once and then walk away so I can get that to you guys so you guys can see all that information and chew on it. So and I think we just have one entrance off of the the road, Wolf. 
um, those are just sidewalks that go to the front doors so that it's just one entrance and then people park on the back of the building. So those are just sidewalks. They're not actually separate entrances, driving entrances. Good point, Jackie. Thank you. Anything else, Randy? Jackie, you have any comments or questions? No, we appreciate your time, but um, yes, Chad can get us any questions and we can get back to, but we really appreciate your time again today. So we'll be looking at the January meeting at the end of last Tuesday in January to make the decision. Hopefully your folks would be available for January 26th. 26. Okay. We can have the council meeting or at the economic development. We can do a joint, um, and I'll double check with the mayor if he wants to do that, but we could do a joint economic development council meeting to bring the council members in. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Very good. Okay, again, thank you, thank you uh, Randy. Thank you, Jackie, and all your support. Very exciting. All right, moving on then. David? Chad, would it be possible to compare some sort of matrix comparing both proposals on one sheet of paper? I can try. <laughs> I think it's worth a shot. I think it would, it would assist, perhaps simplify the review and decision making. What would you have on it, Dave? Uh, in fact, maybe that's something you, you, you can, uh, if you can let Chad yeah. know. I'm thinking uh, like number of, uh, uh, number of uh, uh, apartments. Yeah, uh, one was 50, the, the value 50, of, the, of the, uh, the development, right. maybe. Taxable value. Cities, tax, the right, tax. had a nice Timelines. layout of, yep. of everything that they're having. Yep. Um, I think maybe near that, with what that sheet restaurant. would look good next to mm -hmm. Randy's proposal. Mm -hmm. If you just want to give me the, the highlights of the topics, I can go to both developers and say, okay, what's your value? How many apartments? Blah, 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 blah. So what do you want in that matrix? I can ask them. And, when do you need that by chance? The sooner the better, just to get them the information so they can, you know, work back and forth, especially with the holidays and everything. Yeah. That and, and if we're going to ask the rest of the council to be here, I'd like all that to go to the, the rest of the councilors all at one time yeah it would be enough to get it in the packet so you guys have it for the next council or the next agenda packet like you usually get give them enough time to watch the presentation and yep good anything else all right if not next item on the agenda update the committee on the status of new london COVID 19 business survey april oh, great pull up oh you Oh, actually, April, hold on a second. I'm gonna, sorry, just so I can get Mike to Mike to see it. And Hans. And Hans, yep. Let me just. This is the, the current one. Okay. Yep. All right. So last month we talked about um, questions that we wanted to send out to our business community. <clears throat> we came to an agreement on an impact uh, economic impact survey, which uh, we sent out on December 1st. We had 168 um, chamber business emails that received the survey on December 1st, and then 105 businesses that were mailed a printed copy by the city of New London. To date, we've had 30 responses. <clears throat> So far, but we plan to resend after the holidays. Um, we'll go through and we'll take out the businesses that did reply and we'll send it again to see if we can get um, another response. So the first question, we wanted them to clarify the, the um, business classification that they were in, um, the top three responses, um, over 16%. We're coming from the business and professional services, construction or contractors and manufacturing. Um, we had 10% in that other category, and those were, uh, it was an HVAC company, education, 
and family a family medical practice category. We had a nice variety. Yeah, it was nice. Next, we asked how many um, employees each of these businesses employed. Uh, Fifty-five percent. Um, top response was 55% with one to 10 employees. So we're looking at um, our smaller um, smaller businesses within New London. And then almost 20% were self-employed. It also tells me how many answered and how many skipped there. So every business so far, everybody is answering this, these questions. It was interesting to see the ones that they skipped. Next question, how many of your employees? How many of your employees are at risk of unemployment or layoff as a result of the pandemic? Um, a strong 65% answered that zero employees were um, at risk during the pandemic, which was a relief to see, but eight of them shared that one to five employees are at risk of layoff. Two of them six, said six to 10, and then one of them predicted that 11 to 20 employees um, could be employed, and that is a business that employs 11 to 24 employees. That tells you that that business is, is on the fence of closing. Um, it was a business that didn't reveal their name either. I just know that they're in a restaurant, bar, and grocery um, category. Next, we asked, if business disruption continues at this rate, how soon will your business be at risk of closing permanently? Um, I'll answer this question. One business um, is on the verge of closing within <coughs> one to two months. Um, two of them um, may close within two, three to five months. Four of them are secured um, for five months with reserves. And then 78% are not concerned at this time. So that was, that was a relief to yeah. see as well. Mm -hmm. Next, we asked, what, what are you concerned about? And they were able to choose as many, um, many that, as many that apply to their scenario. The number one concern for our local businesses is just losing work, customers um, because of the pandemic, um, with concern of cus customer traffic as well. Um, like I said, that they could choose as many that pertain to them. And um, between those two, customer traffic and losing customers, there were 36 responses that were chosen there. Um, the other option on the bottom there um, was government overreach, handouts, only business, only cost businesses more. So they're saying um, government handouts only cost us more money and tax money. And then they're concerned about their employee health as well. So we're asking what types of assistance would be most helpful to your business at this time. 24 answered this question and six skipped the question. 37% of them are requesting financial assistance resources uh, over the next 90 days. And I heard Bill just mention that there's another round of the PPP that is coming. Is that been potential, potential or it looks, it looks, promising? Yeah. yeah, we've got calls every single day on it. We're, pre we're preparing for it. So, in the institution. So from a chamber, yeah, from a chamber standpoint, when we see that type of funding that's available, we make sure that the community is is well aware, not only in our newsletter, but also on our, our website and our COVID resources. Before I came down, uh, I heard a news broadcast. McConnell spoke and he said, we're sitting here until we get something done. So there are no holiday deadlines right now, which is a very positive uh, development. So that other, um, please, we ask them to please specify, um, they're asking for government assistance if the pandemic lasts another six months. Um, someone mentioned parking downtown, um, which continues to be an issue. The possibility of lowering taxes and um, opening up businesses back up at, at your discretion if the government decides or if the state decides to close them back down. Back on that slide, April, uh, for these questions that they're responding to, in other words, you ask them uh, how to protect my employees or yep, so I, their own. I had those options and they could choose, they could choose those. And then there's no handwritten them. ones or type. The, the other on the bottom, so the other was um, the, the government assistance if the pandemic lasts another six months, parking downtown and 
uh, lowering our taxes, and then deciding to open up businesses at your discretion if the state decides to close down. Mm. Then we asked um, what types of resources were they able to take um, advantage of during the pandemic? Um, three of them skipped this question. 17 of them were able to take advantage of the PPP and I was happy to see that eight of them um, received that we're all in grant because that's just, that's free money in their pocket. Um, the other options were unemployment. Um, a lot of them said I just wasn't eligible. Some said that they applied and the money ran out for the we're all in grant. Um, another one said uh, I, that they got the phase one, but they were turned down for phase two of the we're all in. Do you have a question? Oh, oh, it's a little tricky. Go ahead. Yeah, the governor established or going to establish a new round of we're all in this grant. The phase two just ended. I haven't heard of a phase three. Um, so we asked, what are some of the other resources and ideas you've used to ensure your business remains sustainable? Um, so it looks like um, 18 of them responded and um, most of them tried to just evolve and utilize other options or increase their digital presence. I highlighted um, a response on there because it just broke my heart. Um, he says, I used my own money that ran out. I took out cash advances that almost broke me. I borrowed money from the bank. I borrowed money from my family. And now the well is dry. That one's just the one. That's one. These are individual responses from each one of the 18 that responded. If one said it, though, Dave, there's, yep. you can multiply Probably that by, 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 by a percentage. So I said we had 30 responses. These are the businesses that chose to publicly list their, their business name. 20, 21 of them shared their name and nine stayed anonymous. What is Bose Optimal Solutions? I'm not familiar with them. So Boss Optimal Solutions is an Appleton business, but she does a lot of business in New London. So she's a chamber member. Same with B&H Lighting. They both do business in New London. They're on my, on my list for, for chamber emails, so. Portonville and Appleton were the only two that are outside of city limits or the city of New London. <coughs> Questions? And again, we want to send this out um, after the holidays, after everything kind of dust settles. We want to send this out to see if we can get additional information. Yeah. From other businesses. I'm sure Chad and I will touch base after the first of the year. And it was, it was pretty easy once we decided to pull the trigger, we had a cover letter that went out and, and the survey. So once we decided on a timeline, so pretty fast. So given your first rollout of this, is there anything that you would change on the next uh, submission? I guess that, that would be a question for the committee, um, just based on some of the responses. Is there additional information that you were hoping to find out from those questions? I think it's pretty cut and dry. I, uh, yeah. I would have filled in those blanks even without asking questions. I mean, uh, filled in the questionnaire, but all those money that's made to this would get pretty cut and dry. That that's the biggest problem. Losing customers and protecting your employees mm -hmm. and cash flow. The traffic, foot traffic. Biggest worry of any business mm -hmm. all the time. <clears throat> It's like what we've talked about before the the happenings in the city. You're not bringing drawn in people out in the public. You know, baseball's not going on. Your holiday activities aren't happening. So after the first of the year, I think April and I'll get together. We'll modify the letter, just say, hey, here's another opportunity or reminder of the, the letter that we put out. And um, we'll just ask it again. April, is there a way do we do we need to, and is there a way to separate this first round from the second round? Is there anything that I can go through and I can take out the responses for the, the ones that identified themselves to make sure that they don't receive a duplicate email? No, but I mean the results. Is there any reason why oh, we'd want to separate them? Sorry. So you like the first results from the first yeah. versus the second? I, I don't even know if there's a reason, two. but 
I don't know if there's going to be a difference in when they answer. So, but that's the kind of, if, you, if you'd like. I thought I'd just ask the question to see if there would be a benefit, but I don't know if there really is. I think it's pretty cut and dry in our minds because we we understand what's going on with our businesses, but I think it's important for our community to also understand what our businesses are going through and what they're saying. I mean, this is their their lifeline. They're they're afraid they're going to have to close their doors, and I want the committee the community to to understand how important it is to support them. Exactly. Maybe turn to John on this one. There's any way we can get like an article. And local paper or something that exactly kind of getting this message out to the people like April said it's very important. Um, the, I wouldn't be able to do it, there'd be a conflict, but Bob Cloud is yeah, watching yes. the meeting right now. Somebody. He typically is on YouTube watching every meeting. Okay, um, he's a very busy man, but you know, there's not a lot of meetings going on this month. I'm sure he's tuned into this meeting. Um, no, it's worth sending them an email. One of one of you, obviously. Sure. If I, I don't really see him. We we kind of work remotely. Um, he works from home a lot, but uh, I think he'll pick up on this. It's a pretty heavy discussion in any community. All I can do is say, "Hey," and we had an <laughs> interesting conversation. April, can you go back to the, you made the comment about di digital marketing and stuff like that. Um, I just, I was kind of reading through this to see. Yeah, there was one that updated their website, created a new website. Um, someone had talked about um, utilizing social media and Facebook more. And I guess um, that kind of feeds into our next discussion. But um, we did that uh, 12 days of local shopping video. Help. What have you heard on that one? On I your... have heard a wonderful feedback about, about that. I have that in my business recap that I just want to thank the city of New London and Casey for not only coming up with the idea, but also facilitating it. I think it was awesome to see the city come forward and support the small businesses that way. It's, we're up to 11,000 views already. And... I'm hearing people who live in the city say, I didn't even know we had these businesses here. So. so that's something that's easy for us to accommodate and help out. I mean, we've got Casey who does a wonderful job and, and they paid for it. I mean, those businesses right. did pay some money towards being in that ad. So, I mean, you were one of them. So rock star in the first, uh, first day. <laughs> so um, yeah, that, those are something that we can really continue on. Great. And maybe could we have, after we get the second round of interviews, have Casey interview April mm -hmm. and going through just what you presented here and have it out on. That could be one of our News London um, features. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. So, do you have to be on Facebook to get those notices or because I was on the YouTube, I kind of was looking for something with the school well, district and I don't that one actually was posted by the we we produced it and oh, gave okay. it to the chamber to promote to post because it was through that um the, uh contest mm -hmm. so we allowed the chamber to do that one okay. but all the other ones are on facebook and our youtube channel okay yeah so there were 13 items and the community was encouraged to like and share it so every time you like and share it you go into a, a raffle to win one of those 13 items so people are just sharing it like crazy so that was that was a genius idea so are algorithms they, are just like skyrocketing are they able to be put on our cable channel we can i mean uh obviously they can't like and share right on the cable right. channel but i did have a talk with casey and he is trying to make sure everything's posted on the cable channel the only thing with this one we we allowed the chamber to kind of be the yeah. the focus of posting this this one so. but any other suggestions comments I actually have a question in regards to the survey. Um, maybe like another question. I don't know if you can still add questions, but um, just like a simple like percentage of how much sales have actually decreased or like, especially with the holidays, you can really see, because usually that's the busy, busiest time of the year for a lot of businesses and stuff. So how much that has actually decreased just like a simple percentage wise or something. So like just what, what a decrease from your average sales right. since the pandemic has, has started. Yeah. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. Very good. Any others? 
comments, questions? Okay, well, thank you, April. Mm -hmm. Next update, uh, a review of social media marketing services proposal. Is it Chad? Uh, uh, David? I'm just gonna suggest that this item be combined with the city administrator's report. Number six? Yeah. I think that would. Either or, I was just going to kind of talk about it as a, its own item because it's okay. Whatever you're more comfortable. Yeah. With. And the only reason with that is just because it it kind of maybe would have a um, an action item behind it mm -hmm. potentially. So yep. um, the reason that I put this on the agenda: review social media marketing services. As most of you probably know, we retain uh, Bill Zeinert, uh, his company, my um, my marketing director out of Clintonville. And over the last several years, he's been pushing uh, marketing videos on Facebook and I think YouTube as well. Um, what my proposal is, because we have Casey, and I hope by now you guys have seen his talent on Facebook and on YouTube and stuff like that, I'd like to uh, make a proposal that we allow the uh, bill's contract to expire, which expires at the end of this year, so on December 31st, and then try those marketing efforts in-house. Um, what I'd like to see instead of pushing, we've been pushing those four or five videos, how many ever they are for the last several years. So obviously that content can get stagnant. Whereas with Casey, he's always producing new content, always producing new videos, um, and information. So I'd, I'd like to take the money that we're paying with uh, Bill Ziner and try to do it in house. Now, if, if we feel like we're not getting our best bang for our buck by trying this, Hey, we can always go back to Bill or whoever else to, to try that. But, um, Casey and I have had a lot of different conversations about how we want to do this. I think we um, eventually would create some type of marketing plan and, and bring the commi this committee in to kind of see what do you guys, how you guys want to market this? Do you guys want us to target um, uh, workforce development? Do you want to target business? Do you want to target, you know, residential or commercial? I mean, what do you, what do you guys want us to target? Um, and then try to go from there. But um, I, I'd love to see us use those marketing dollars and just promote what he's doing right now. I mean, that that video with the Wolf River um, Art League and the mural thing, I pushing that in the valley, you know, and, and it did on its own, but just, it's like the Nike thing. You always see Nike, you always see Reebok, you always see just that constant reminder of New London, New London, New London, New London. Mm -hmm. I, I think that would go a long way. So just pushing those videos that he's doing and showing and, and showcasing the quality of life, showcasing what New London's all about, showcasing what New London does on a constant basis. And they're just quick little things. I mean, like Casey and I've been talking and, and I'm getting a lot of this information from him. A lot of that stuff like Facebook marketing is just 15 second little, little segments. I mean, you, you put a three, three to five minute video out there. A lot of times people are dropping off. You know, they're, they're, they continue to search on their Facebook page, but you get that 15 little thing about kayaking video or it's walleye season in New London or whatever, you know, I, I think we try to use that in house. So my proposal is um, let's allow the contract to aspire at the end of this uh, year, end of this month and, and try to use those, those marketing dollars in house. And we would work together on how we want to do that. But I guess that's my proposal at this point in time. I think it only makes sense. 100%. 100%. Casey's doing some neat stuff. That I, if you have the talent in house, it only makes sense to, to utilize yeah. that talent. David? Um, I would move that we move forward with Chad's recommendation in terms of uh, terminating or letting the contract designers cease and to move forward with local with in-house uh, capability subject to uh, uh, review and decisions and whatever with this committee. Is there a second? Second. Um, Fred, second. Uh, April, second. Uh, and, and, and not to put down Bill because he's done a good job right. and I, I don't want to yeah, say, I, you know, but we have that talent in-house yep, exactly. now. Exactly. We've, we've, it. Yep. we've advanced as a city with we've our in-house. Yep. I'd like to, like to thank Bill for his service and, and he knows that we've got a wonderful new guy on board that he's probably just as excited about Casey joining us as, as we are. That $12,000 a year, you know, we've got a building facade fund to replenish. We've got other things to, so. And with, with that said, I don't 
correct me if I'm wrong. We're not going to save a ton of money by going this route because a lot of that stuff still costs money. Mm -hmm. We will have an upfront savings, but yeah. Yeah. other comments. And we are still using Bill through the Packet County Economic Development okay. Corporation for the Claritis information. So we have, we'll still use Bill for that stuff. Any other comments, questions? I think it's a great idea. Okay, good. All right, all in favor say aye. All right. Aye. 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 Motion carried. Anything else on that, Chad? Nope, that's it. Okay, April business update? I have a short report update for you guys. Um, there's been a little bit of movement on North Water Street, some openings. Obviously, the Republican and Democratic parties have moved on, so we have some openings they were just leasing short term there. Um, we had a, a new location move, Blue Gorilla Lounge. It's an alternative worship op op option, I would call it. Uh, moved into 309 North Water Street, which was the former Blush Studio. Um, the realtor there is offering six months free for that organization. So he is setting up and um, ready to go. We had a new business go in another little small boutique um, specialty retail, I would call her uh, business go over um, by the former Piggly Wiggly. Um, her business is called Bomb Bomb. She's at 1923 North Shano Street. So she's in the same building as Wolf River Eye Care. So small specialty um, retail over there. So now we have two retail over on the other side of town. Um, and then I just said on here, another special thanks to the city of New London and Casey for um, helping out the businesses with the 12 days of shopping local. Very good. Have you heard any information on the pantry? Last month's report you had posted that they will be closing. January I haven't 1st. heard a follow up from, from somebody had reported that she had changed her mind. Oh, Dave Dorsey said that. Dave Dorsey said, Dave Dorsey said, Dorsey. He said that she wasn't closing. Wonderful. David? I have a question. I've, I've had this question posed to me by several people in the last few days. Uh, what's going on at the intersection of 15 and 45? That's on the phone. Right? That's the sewer Street work for Sarah Lee. 15 to 45 or Hill Street. Hill Street and Industrial Loop Road. Yeah, Hill Street and Industrial Road. Yeah, that's Hill Street and yeah. that's city. So that's that's Tyson. They, um, the, the, the DNR is requiring them to change where they're um, discharging their wastewater. They want them to discharge in a larger body of water, so the Wolf River. So they're putting, they're installing a force main pipe, sanitary sewer pipe, to the Wolf River. So they're discharging in the Wolf River instead of, what's the little creek over there? Mud Lake. Mud Lake. Gotcha. Yep. That's what that's all about. The other two perspective um, businesses are not um, 100% yet. So hopefully I can report on those next, next month. Any questions for April? Not, thanks, April. Mm -hmm. State Administrator, Chad? Yep, the only thing I got to report on is I continue to work with Midwest Properties in the potential development in the industrial park. Um, through the process of working on the developing, uh, developer's agreement, I found, and I didn't know this, and I don't know if anybody else knew this, there is a covenant on that industrial park. So going through the process that I found that out and we're working out some of the things because there's there's restrictions on, you know, building material and what type of businesses go in there. There's a whole set of covenant type related, you know, items. So we've been working out those type of things throughout the agreement and we have to put together um, a stormwater management um maintenance agreement as well so we're just working through those processes but it's good to know now in the future that i know there's a covenant on that property now that that'll help that's it okay questions for chad there's covenants <coughs> going to delay things um, it delayed the process a little bit just because I didn't know about it. And we got so far, I was like, oh, we got to work on this. And we had to go back. And they're still working um, with their potential tenant in their agreement, their tenant agreement as well. So um, last I heard, they were pretty close, but I don't know if they've actually signed with their tenant yet. So that's another uh, factor. But um, it's, it's moving along. So good. Any other questions for Jeff? Tom? The covenants are kind of like zoning. And I, I don't think you can change them. 
Um, otherwise, I think everybody in the park would have to approve it. I don't know. Correct. That covenant, I did read that, that there has to be so many people in the covenant, so many owners, and that each owner gets a vote if there's going to be a change. So, correct. It's it's like zoning, but more restrictive zoning. More restrictive. Yeah. And it, it can be changed, but it's not just the city changing it. It's the owners changing it. The as land. Well. It goes with the land. Yep. Thanks, Tom. Okay, anything else for Chad? If not, we're up to uh, item number eight, review activities and speech or, uh, speakers for future meetings. I think, like we said, next month, we should just set aside for uh, the developers. Make sense? And then, uh, anyone disagree or comment? No, I agree. Okay. It's gonna be a lengthy discussion, I'm sure. Yep. Do we invite members of the planning, or do we want any members of the planning commission sitting? That's a good it? question, John. Yeah. We have two or three citizen members, there. and that would also get um, Jay here. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think we're to the point that we would ask him to come anyway, no matter what. Even if we didn't have planning commission, you know, um, we've got our planning commission chairman right here. Depending on if he feels that the whole commission should come as well. I don't know. I think you need the whole committee here. We can invite them to let them know what's so, going on. Will you talk to them on Thursday? Yeah, we'll yeah. tell them what's going on. And I if they want to come to the meeting for more information, then they know what's going on. I think that's a good idea. Can I ask what we are going to be asked to approve next month? In other words, is there a written proposal from either one of these developers I mean, do we know how much each one of these projects is going to cost the city? Um, I, I just, it feels a bit, are we just approving some some pictures, some renderings that we've seen? Like, what is it actually that we are approving? Hans, I think at this point in time, you're just um, approving a relationship to work together with a developer on a proposal to further that proposal and start talking about our developer's agreement. All that stuff, like a developer's agreement, obviously has to come back for full council approval. So I think it's a matter of choosing a developer to continue those conversations and flush out all those little details that like you're talking about. You can't make a decision just to sell them the site right now by any means. Unless you have a, an option that you feel like we should consider. No. All right. It's a good question, Hans, and uh, I agree with Chad. I think that next month's meeting was simply picking one of the two developers to work then in developing all the things that you talked about, Chad. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a fair amount of work, I would think, involved in that on their end, and to have both of them go through that, uh, and then, then one of them turn around and say, sorry, you know, we don't need you. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a bad feeling for them. Right. Right. So if we're having the developers are going to be on at the meeting as well while we're while we're asking all these questions, at some point are we going to have a, a point of time to just openly discuss yes. it without right? Because it's gonna seem weird if we're we're asking the developers the questions because we don't we're not ready to or are we planning on deciding right away at the beginning of the meeting? I believe that we have the opportunity to go into closed session. To if we're going to um, make an agreement to continue continue a, uh, an agreement with the city, yeah. I mean, we'd, I'd have to look into that, but I, I think we do have that uh, right to do that. Okay. Yeah, I just think it'd be somewhat awkward mm -hmm. if we're trying to, and then all of a sudden we're trying to have just open discussion. You know, some of us are going to like the buildings that are sitting sideways going towards the river for more and, and some of that. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I kind of agree with that. That'd be a little bit of awkward after, you know, you want to be able to talk mm -hmm. um, to each other about things without, you know, so feeling common. like you're putting somebody, you're hurting somebody's, you know. It's common sense is that uh, we can look into our options of going into a closed session to to discuss matters at, at that point in time and, and come out of closed session and be able to make a decision. 
All right, we can look into that before we post it. And if anybody has a uh, preferred path or how we want to approach this, like Han was talking about, you know, now's the time to talk about it, how we want to proceed with moving forward. You know, I guess that was just an option to, to choose a developer to start the relationship with and flush out all those, you know, different types of things. But if, if you guys got a different path you want to take, now's the time to talk about it. Anyone disagree with that? No, I, I think the mayor has, I think the mayor wants to move this thing forward. Right, Mark? Absolutely. And, uh, Absolutely. I mean, we can discuss this until 2036. Mm -hmm. Right. And we won't be any further along than we are today. So let's do what the mayor says. Yeah, I think we, I think we definitely move forward with a choice. And I, and I know what Hans was expressing too is, how far do you drag that along? And then, like Chad said too, and there's a lot of work that goes into it. And do you drag them both along to that final proposal? I mean, we can do that. That's up to you guys. I don't think that's necessarily a good situation. We look at what we have here, the information given to us, and, and um, we make our choices to move forward, just like you would if you were building your own house. I mean, you're at that point. Which which guy are you going to pick to, to move forward with? <clears throat> did, did Randy seem to be – Was it, did I hear his timeline was much more condensed? Yes, and and I almost felt like it was just like uh, like like you said, building a house, almost a laid back. Okay, let's do this. It's, it's less um, I don't know, procedural. It just seemed like it was a shorter. I thought he was. I think like, he said one year. Summer. One year. Yeah, it's yeah. it seemed like he was going to be quicker out of the gate, but if I understood his timeline compared to their timeline, he was going to be done in the beginning of twenty twenty three. And they were looking at being done in the fall of 2023, if I understood it correctly. John, you had a question? Well, those are, those are follow-up questions we'd want right. to do in a month. But um, I know they would start almost all of theirs at once, and then he would do two at a time, similar to what he did out here. Randy quoted that he would be completed within a year and a half to two years max as to where Swiderski said three years and theirs are opening towards the end of their three years. Okay, so the plan for next month is then we'll have an open session with the developers for questions or comments or whatever. Hopefully we'll go into closed session, we'll debate it, come out of closed session, make a decision. Okay. okay. All right, moving on. Public comment. Sure. I, uh, I'm a handyman. I do work for my landlord. I work for a company with the homeowner. It seems like there was a company up there, and uh, maybe it was the school one. I've seen them go both ways. Some companies handle their job as a manager. Um, both ways, you know, what's your time? I would suggest maybe looking at some of their other properties and seeing if there's a general debate with what the problems are with their data. Maybe that's why I don't know if it's people sitting on the porch picking the 40s at 9 a.m. or they're not, you know. I think he's got a good point too. It wouldn't hurt to reach out to a PACA to see what type of relationship or experience they had with, with that developer. I mean, we know Randy and and what he's brought to New London, but it'd be interesting to see what PACA has to say too. And I did, I did contact Aaron um, Jensen in Wapaka. He's the city administrator over there. I know him through some other venues. And I asked him that question about SC Swiderski and they're finishing up some uh, projects over there. And he said, I got nothing bad to talk about. I mean, he said the current project, there were some delays, but he thinks that was more with the state or something with um, their permitting or something like that. But he's like, I, I would have nothing bad to say about them. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your comment. It reminds me that um, a couple of years ago, Tom, you remember, you know, John, you were along. 
we did visit Oshkosh when we had one of the developers come in. We actually took a bus, the city bus, mm -hmm. went down and viewed their building and came back with an un, I'd say unfavorable, but we weren't impressed with the building that they had put up. But again, it was, it takes time to do that kind of thing and not a good time of year. I don't know. All right, any other comments? Yeah. yeah. I guess, you know, are we gonna give them some kind of an opportunity so that they're talking about filling it before they build the building? Uh, we gotta, they gotta know they're gonna own it somehow. That's what we'll be working on, I think, in the next step. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think they both referenced that, mm -hmm. that like I know Randy said, talked about the private roads. So he knows that he would be the owner of that. And, and SCS made the comment about, um, you know, working with the city for a very reasonable purchase price. So I think they both have that concept in their minds. Okay. Review next meeting date. Again, uh, we talked about the last Tuesday in January. With that then, a motion to adjourn. So Tom, so those are second. Second. All seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you all. Bill, did you second that? I didn't do yes. yeah, it. Bill. Recursive anymore. Thank I you all. I think they stopped a little bit ago, but I don't know.